Welcome everyone to the Southside Corio, uh season two. Boom! You know, uh, I never thought that we'd go back to season two. My word! We are making, we are, we are changing with the seasons, Vinny. Do you think anyone knows who I am, Ren? These parts? Uh, I think you need to have a proper introduction. You only been on one episode. I'm yeah, just that. guest guest host Will is now co-host with Vin. Yay! And, uh, so kia ora, kia orana. welcome everybody. This is awesome. Yeah, no, I, I I come back from a hiatus. I, came, I, I, I went on a um, holiday trip out to the uh, islands, got a nice tan, and we came back ready for season two. Um, we are very pumped, even though we're sitting in chairs and we're behaving ourselves, we are very pumped to be bringing you this new season of Southside Quarter to Way, bro. Absolutely. Uh, you're pumped because you got a co-host. Yeah, no, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't have to run run solo like in, um, uh, I'm going to have an insert placement of uh, We Are Tower Podcast. Editor Will, just put the logo underneath right here. It'll be great. <laughs> on the Editor Will. Uh, so look, we're planning on bringing you more awesome corridor that's meaningful, that will hopefully provide a roadmap of where we've come from and where we're going. And yeah. um, today's episode is is no joke, eh? No, that was a really good episode with... Um, he, 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 he I, I laughed at that day. He was like, oh, I would rather be heard to be called Ken. And um, Ken is an amazing uh, guest that we went through on episode one, season two. And just, you know, I hope you get to watch it because he, he's his insight, uh, not only being in a part of the, you know, part of the industry, but just his his life work and just everything that he does is, is awesome. So Ken is a facial animator or animator with Weta, which is the company that brought us Lord of the Rings. Yeah, man. Basically the visual effects for uh, movies like um, Avatar and all the Marvel films. Ghost so in the Shell. For, it's huge. Yeah. And we get a main player who comes into uh, our little home of Accelerating Aotearoa today to have a deep and meaningful with us. Okay, team enough talking from us it's time to get into our podcast with our friend kennedy kia toi fai mani for or as we know him ken hey. vinny and i have been workshopping have you ever heard of a rolling start bro you know what a no. rolling start is it's um a podcast technique which you just start having hardcore small talk. Oh, yeah. That's so um, we're really conscious about, especially uh, when you talk about meaningful stuff, people get into the zone of media where they, o- they only want to answer questions, mm-hmm. you know, and like actually why podcasting is cool, I think, or why we think is that it ends up just being a chat. Yeah, this, yeah. So I like that. this is my attempt at a rolling start. Oh, no, I mean, I wanted to let you go with it because literally it was just like, oh, man, what was on his, on his roll again? <laughs> it's a rolling start. Eh? Yeah, I like right. that. It's a new technique for me too. Bro. Oh. And, well, wouldn't a rolling start be awesome if you could, like, live that every day? No, absolutely. Waking up and you're like, man, I'm on a rolling start <laughs> instead of what it currently is where I've got to be somewhere. I've got yeah. a seven o'clock appointment somewhere. Yeah. No, no, I've just got to roll up. I reckon that's what causes stress, eh? This anxiety about you're always late. You can't yeah. ever be early enough. Does it feel like that in your media industry, bro? 100%. Yeah, even today. Mm. I, I like the idea of the rolling start, you know, going over to the uh, to the spa in the sauna today and just start chatting to someone <laughs> so here's my days this is a better way to start actually mm. rather than uh, off my computer and you know taking your breathe your your breathing techniques and getting ready yeah. it actually worked out better but yeah no it's definitely a yeah definitely very scheduled yeah. type of work i guess uh being efficient and uh trying to be proficient with your time yeah it's always it's always a a juggle um um i guess too we can kind of go deep into your your history and 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 maybe at the beginning we will outline a little bit Mm. about what you do but you, you know just back on that rolling start for a second i find it fascinating that our ancestors were probably more like what we just described they woke yeah. up, 
they probably went for a swim or, mm. you know, like mm. I think we think that our ancestors were all about like freaking out and stressed and, but I'm sure that they were chilled, you know, that they maybe looked for food, had them. I, I, I'm, I'm sure my ancestors were like the most chillest people in the world. <laughs> They'd like literally like, yeah, I'm going to go hunt. I'm going to go fish. And then probably like the next few hours, I'm going to take the biggest nap ever <laughs> and then cook food because grandma's probably yelling at them about it. I like that idea. That sounds like the best day, actually. Yeah. You know, in many ways, I think if we could design our ideal day, it's probably going right back to our, you know, our ancestors' way of living, really. And then just throw work in amongst that as opposed to our work driving the day. And it's trying to find those little moments in our day to uh, <laughs> to do those things that feel good. It's weird to be talking about this kind of stuff in the environment we live in, eh? Like, yeah. we're, we're not even out of COVID. No, we're It's not. full on, eh? Like, I, I don't know. There's all those um, studies that come out and and they're talking about, you know, the, the fallout of how things go, like a butterfly effect. It's... I don't know. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, man, that's, uh, that's pretty hardcore at the moment, mm. eh? How have you been dealing with, like, the last couple of years, bro? Yeah, I agree. The had its ripple effect. I think it's uh, pros and cons to anything when it comes to change. I think uh, the change that it's done, though, has benefited maybe families a little bit more, just a little bit maybe, to allow us to be home more often. Yeah. Uh, especially in my line of work, you know, if you imagine a 50-hour day, not at home, <laughs> uh, a 50-hour day being home, uh, so you're maybe present a little bit more within that 50 hours. So it means that our families benefit. Uh, people do not only see us at bedtime or sleep time. It'd definitely be like that, though, you know. Uh, coming post uh, even pre-COVID you know I would wake up do council work come back home but then that whole time gap that you've been working you missed out everything that's at home because mum might have done something or dad done something you know and then when you come back home you're too tired or you're too knackered to, to interact even with mum and dad and you go oh yeah how was your day cool all right, bye, and that's mm-hmm. it. But when COVID hit, it allowed me to connect with not only my father and my mother. They'll be like, "Oh, this is what they do every morning." Oh, cool, you know the garden work and whatnot. And then it gives you time to actually, okay, I at this point at home, what can I do at home now? What can I fill in my hours? Mm-hmm. And half the time it's just me trying to connect with me at the end of the day. And we had that early conversation, right? Is is connecting with yourself. So, exactly. but if you can, because one of the yeah. observations and chats I had with people is, I found it really hard not to be in that grind, even if at home. And you know, you'd get these communications like, "Oh, just low and relax," but like we're all in our working years, we've been built mm. to to go you know to yeah. to always show people that we've got more than 110 percent do you feel um you were able to get into a routine yourself I, COVID? honestly i felt like i chose my family first and that kind yeah. of got me in trouble with work <laughs> you know and it was really hard for me <laughs> because when someone says oh you can have more family time like i'm literal yeah. it's on yeah. i'm going for a walk because it's sunny yeah exactly where were you for the meeting <laughs> I went for a walk. Hello, you told me to go for one. I mean, that's why, actually, why I'm pushing so hard for this stuff, because I want this to be what it is. It's work for Vinny and I today, Mm. and I want us to get used to, like, we hung out with someone new. We connected. That was work. And it could be that, you know, all the big dreams of where you plant those seeds, maybe there's something cool to do down the line, but where does it start? I don't know. I can imagine us, we, in another generations we were planting something together or yeah. you know you could, your, your 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 mahi could actually take place in a variety of places right mm. you can literally go have a chat at a cafe mm. uh you know and if you had to record it and record you know yeah. then you that's what you have to do but it looks it sounds like a good way of working right you work you take your work wherever you want it to be yeah 
And I think that's the world I like the sound of, you know, because uh, if my kids are old enough and I want to say go live somewhere else, uh, it means that uh, you know we have the opportunity to ideally next to a beach where it's sunny, uh, and I could just do maybe four hours a day. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean that's the dream, right? Is to do less work but enjoy life as much as possible, right? And reap yeah. the benefits of it. And I think that's where. Uh, I probably thought it's like a double-edged sword, right? Because I love what I do, everything about it, even the busyness. Probably sometimes, maybe a little bit addicted to it. That's probably why it's happening. But on the other end, like end of it, it's like okay, if I could swap out some of this time, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, but wait a minute, I still love doing this work, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, for me, this type of work being uh, maybe having some flexibility is probably a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, having the flexibility to do a four day week, mm-hmm. you know, those kind of things sound um, like they sort of help out help out our water. Um, what are the m- most common? Like we did a bit of a Google, you know, we don't research our guests, but we watched a couple of the interviews that are around online. What's the most common questions you get about your line of work? I don't know. I don't tend to remember questions. I just like to. Talanoa and Kōrero around mm. um, the different spaces that I occupy. Mm. Um, but I guess the main thing being, you know, what is Manatoa yeah. <laughs> uh, and what it is I do for a living. Yeah. <clears throat> is it hard to explain depending on who you're talking to? Like, do you have folks in your family who are there? Like, what, what, what do they call you? <laughs> <laughs> Ken does stuff that's creative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. the yeah. general. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's actually true now because uh, if they if I can't really pinpoint it anymore, mm. I, I don't expect them to anymore. Um, you know, once was an animator, now an animator again. But wait, he doesn't do bodies, he does faces. Mm. Uh, but then he does bodies in these other projects. And wait, he said as a graphic designer, you know, runs his own business. He's he said he's just starting a football club too. What's going on? Like <laughs> Kikin's starting a football club. Okay. Oh, he's also got clothing line. What what's going on? like what is he? Is anything that involves digital creative work. I, I I live in amongst it. You know? Editing, filming, motion graphics, that's what we do. And I guess that's what's uh, a little bit about what Monitor was all about, so um, you know, we do some creative. I would say that's exactly. in line of what we all do, and I have such a privilege, like trying to use that word in today's world. But I really feel like it's an honor and a privilege because you get it's so fun to be locked into something creative. Yeah, you go into. Uh, it's, I don't really like the word because I don't know really what it means, but you know they talk about flow and but you lose time. It's like sometimes podcasting. All of a sudden, it can be really slow if you're not gelling with the guest. But like even now, we're not aware of time. We're yeah. just in yeah. the space, yeah. eh? And I think like that's one of the hardest things about trying to push. Um, let's say, for example, in my education work, there's a lot of push for Maori Pacific to be in STEM, and I sit there and think, well, can you have to Talk about why that would be good. Yeah. Because I like that conversation yeah, too. Because yeah. um, as much as I love to say that I'm in the, like this creative world, you know, part of my master's project was to look at, okay, why are there not enough of us here? And okay, let's keep going further and further back as opposed to forward and, and just looking at that pathway. And, um, you know, some really interesting research there, and um, I, I guess I was lucky enough to be in a, a few different places to gather research, you know. So like yourself, it's it's like these opportunities as is, is, is an opportunity for research information, but I worked at a company called uh, The Cause Collective, and uh, they focus on social change for South Auckland, specifically just South Auckland, and I love that. It's like, okay. A place that focuses on the health and well-being and the futures of our people, Māori, Pacific people in South Auckland, you know, a company dedicated to that. To me, that sounds, you know, 
why wouldn't I want to work there? And then to find out that they are not just caring about the community, they're doing all the research for that community. And so you get to see all the insights, you know, all, all the all that data that I couldn't even possibly gather myself. And this is like, wow, this is amazing knowledge that I will be forever grateful because I wouldn't even know where to start to go and get that information. Mm. You know, and one of them is um, when we talk about barriers and problems in the community. And for me, I, I assumed based on my lived experience and my career, right? And then you go into a place like that and there's a whole lot of research there that I was like, never thought about it, but actually I needed to know that. Thank you. Mm. Um, and some of it's that research that you only sort of chose yourself to be researching. Like, oh, you know, because when I was growing up, yeah. this is how it is. And that's what happens to all of our people. Well, I just said that because of the people that I know, right? Yeah. But then you go and get real data and it's, uh, you know, I've never been much of a data person, but mm. in that moment, that data is valuable to know that kind of, those questions, answers to the questions. Oh, yeah. And and that puts into context why you sh- why it would be good to have a career doing digital, because that exactly. also means you have to understand the data. Which, if you look at like how policy is made, it's based off data and lived experience. So who's mining the lived experience to match their data sets, right? Yeah. And it's definitely not the community. Yeah. Well, not enough, you know. Like, um, so it's yeah, man, it's. Uh, Oh man, I could talk about it for days. You know, it's, 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 I love it because it's fascinating information. And then, you know, because I focus on the design, my master's was in design, which is all about problem solving. And actually, you know, as a kid, I never thought I'd go and pursue a master of design where the focus is not on designing pretty pictures. The focus is designing things based on user experiences. And those users, if you're focusing on South Auckland and Māori Pacific people, those are your users. So where are you going to get that information from? That's that's where the value starts to become. Because then it's everything is driven. It's all driven by data. It's all driven by experience, not just data, but lived experiences. And then the people. And they, they, they don't have to use the word users. You know, that's, that's a design term. But a user is a single piece of research but mm. they like to use um, the community right? the people yeah. um, because they're the ones who matter they're, they're valued their information is valuable mm. to drive the next steps I, I love that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. 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 Um, sorry Vin I'm taking over your podcast no it's alright it's alright <laughs> slowly start zooming in just on me and Ken <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't mind I can, I can just fade into the end yeah, don't worry yeah, about yeah. it I'm just a producer who asks all the questions no you're right it's a um, fascinating conversation because it's it's also like in line with you know think about my Cook Island ancestry and the even my mum coming to New Zealand was like 10 years for all the brothers and sisters to come. It was a voyage based over a decade. Like, well, I can't even comprehend that now, mm, you know, based yeah. off my upbringing here. But um, there's something kind of nice thinking about this world we're navigating. We are voyaging in our own weird digital yep. waters. Yep. And they're no less dangerous than the ones we come from. No. Hey? And it's not even like you can turn left and right. You might have some rough ideas where to navigate, but... It's as complicated as, I think, the oceans. <laughs> you know, you had to know the, the wind and all of those things and how much food to take with you and and actually trust that there's somewhere worth going. Yeah. You know, because some days I'm like, yeah. yeah. I mean, do you kind of have that belief, bro, that we're not all just turning into, I don't know, a sentient robot that we're going to be joined to our phone even closer and that the best thing we could do is shut the laptop? Man, I'd like to be a robot, though. <laughs> uh, but no, I think, no. I would, if I was to choose something, it would be to have more time in the day. But, uh, yeah, I guess I like that because it is true. We we don't just have a clear pathway either. Um, everyone's coming from a different angle, uh, different experiences, 
and that's what we like to talk about being from South Auckland that we're actually navigating a totally different ocean to people outside of South Auckland and uh, in actual fact once we learn and this is what I, I truly believe if you think about all the bad things that we hear about being from South Auckland if you when you channel those, those activities into something positive man we could achieve anything anything from hustling you turn that into the real life that's business world yeah. um, you know whether it be how they deal with the different uh, negative events within the community uh, I feel like again you transfer that to the world of making real money they and change you know some people actually want to help their friends and within their community and sometimes that's why they make bad decisions. But imagine you flip that again, you know. I feel personally, I've always used my South Auckland, um, the skills that I've learned from growing up, um, whether it be from trauma or from any experience that's been used to help levitate my career. Mm. But, you know, that whole voyage, I like that because we understand, well, we're starting to understand it a lot better that, uh, you know, how to navigate through the digital space. And I think a lot of us probably feel we understand it maybe a little bit better than others, but not many people can truly understand it from our perspective. Maybe if we went somewhere in the States, they have a really clear understanding and they've created all these awesome stepping stones to actually just pretty much propel them and I think we're still working on that. Yeah. Um, but they, need, they do need to bring a lot more of us together to help, you know, focus on that pathway. Mm. Um, you know, I I can talk about, you know, something that came through as well for me where we had come up with this plan. And if you think about it, we was going right back again and thinking about that sort of navigating them through to success and the creative tech industry mm. and I'm sure we're all here aware of the 2% of multi percent people in the yeah, creative tech industry sense. and it's like so how do we make a change you know how do we change that how to so we first need to understand the back end which is where they're going to the pathway and then we work our way back down and you mentioned STEM mm. STEM is the starting point mm. so okay we're just going to we're going to start there. So we've got, and what I came through to the research was there's four different sort of, if we summarize that, there's four different steps. STEM, we've got tertiary, we've got the bridge programs, and then we've got employment. And the bridge programs, similar to Tupatua, you know, some of the amazing space they've got there. We've got tertiary providers, which are pretty much universities. And then we've got STEMs, all the different STEM programs all throughout South Auckland. I think, all four of those are important. Yeah. yeah. Really important. Um, I wonder where we fit right now. You know, like, actually, we're all of it in some way, yeah. but it's like a more, you know, like uh, Vinny and I set this kind of goal. I learned this stat, which is like, if you can do 21 podcast episodes, you're in the 1% of worldwide podcasts. Mm. And I like the idea that we should hunt out 1% things. <laughs> And then try and like give people that opportunity and like a podcast is pretty cool because especially if you well one it's a practice way to practice talking yeah and then two you you know hopefully if it starts going and you get all yes then they can meet you halfway it's not work you know it's oldest of old we either fight or we talk something like that so um, we just. Trying to hit that one percent. What's this podcast, Vinny? How many episodes on the show? Up to, we're up to nine now. What Southside Quarter? Southside Quarter. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is actually our first in person, eh? Yeah, this is season two. Because it was I'm just going to wrap this up. Like okay. Season two. Sweet. Now. It was, was born in, um, in lockdown. Vinny interviewed David Tour oh, during cool. lockdown. That was cool. Eh? He gave you the <laughs> he he gave, he gave me the heebie-jeebies that followed it. <laughs> I swear, he's he, scary. He, <laughs> You don't even want a small joke, Jeremy. Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> the brother just gave me the normal look. He, he was a, he was it was his resting face that literally just scares me. <laughs> I was just like, 
I'm not going to throw any O jokes in there. I'm not going to throw any other jokes. He gave you an O for awesome, though. <laughs> he did. Oh. Shit. You're a good. You're an O for awesome podcast host. <laughs> I sat. I sat there going, "Cool." He actually said the joke. Cool. I can. I can. I can work with that. It's cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to drop that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a bit like um, us kicking straight off with you with something like avatar or something yeah because yeah. but you know we've been fanboying hard trying to work out how do we talk about what was the one you wanted to talk about i was, you... I was gonna ask you about ghost in the shell since <coughs> so it's weather did well ghost in the shell but i actually did some research yeah i did some research comfy panda's pretty cool as well <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh man i'm going through his i'm going through his filmography and all that stuff and um just now today just talking to you is the, the just learning about the core the core ken what is more than important than anything else when it comes to the podcast is that we figure out the core ken that that's been wanting to work out what he's trying to figure out like the from from the first minute we met was i'm just taking a day off to yeah. learn about myself you know <laughs> that's the important thing we need to learn and mm. that's what self quarter is all about is that we learn about the core person first more than anything. We can talk about all the other stuff for the next few hours or the next few days. But at the end of the day, we come in to interview Ken. And that's the important thing. Yeah, well, I was going to say that because, like, you know, growing up, we taught, we were taught to work hard. Can't remember the moments where I was taught to really take care of myself. You know, well, well, it wasn't called taking care of yourself, but it was taking care of yourself when you get into sports. Mm. You know, when, when my dad got me into sports, actually, <laughs> I actually did the boxing just in the corner here. Mm. Uh, uh, village gym, I can't remember. But I used to do boxing. My dad used to bring me here once or twice a week to do boxing, so rugby and yeah. Manarewa. And at the time, you're like, oh, why am I doing this stuff? You know, and I only really truly understand it today because well being. Right, exercise is a part of well-being, mm-hmm. and uh, a stress relief, and and sports is a big part of that. Uh, and I do the same today with my kids. You know, today they're like, "Oh, do we have to do this thing?" I'm like, "Yes." Um, <laughs> why? Because it's good for your. And I actually use the words, "It's good for your well-being." Hey. And now I'm like, "What's well being? <laughs> we're kids. We're fine." <laughs> um, no, because it's really important. And I actually, I actually break it down for them in a real technical term now. Words that my dad could never have ever. You know, his, English is a second language, and still today he finds it very difficult. Uh, so when I break it down to my kids, they're like, "Okay." We expect the dad to say that the man we said why, <laughs> you know, why do we have to exercise? Well, the reason you have to exercise, right? We all got a certain amount of calorie count, and uh, <laughs> you know, x amount of exercise per day will help you with the 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 right. So in the long term, you can da, 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 and they're like, okay, okay, you know, and taught, you know, it's it's also actually a, I actually mentioned this as well. It's not just well being, but it's our connection. So this morning, for example, I had a day off, right? I said to my kids, I'm going to walk you guys to the train. Awesome. And we, under, like between us, we understand why we, it's important for me to do something small like that. Because just in that 15-minute walk, we had so much conversation. To the point they realized the train was in there. So I just ran off and I was like, hey, bye. <laughs> and I was just like, see, I love this. You know, it's... it's and my dad used to do the same with me, but we never called it that. No. You know, my dad used to we go for drives, long drives. And uh, let's do something. And I'm like, okay, I'll just jump in the car, you know. And we ended up chatting for ages. But it was just, we just never called it that. We didn't have labels. But that's what it is, right? That moment of your parent or going to watch <clears throat> a family member perform, you know, just that moment with your family, that's, that's a little bit of well-being right there, you know. Um, so teaching that, I love passing that knowledge on to my kids so that they know – when they're older, okay, I should probably do something today to help with my, you know, my well-being. Maybe it's to go see a friend, have a good kai, have a good chat, uh, go watch a movie, sleep. Yeah, that's my plan today. By the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got a movie booked in? Uh, I probably just jump on Netflix and lay on my bed for a bit. Yeah, I've been trying to get to the new Top Gun. 
but I can't find anyone to go with. And <sighs> my kids aren't really interested. And Same. my wife's like, hey, man, I'm a Tom Cruise fan, not you. And I'm like, I don't know why, but everyone's talking about it. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's also important to say, like, I, I think when I first started in this, my career, I definitely saw all the stuff that I wanted to work on and that I did work on as a huge highlight. But I think mm-hmm. as I got older and I moved into that space of caring more about the rangatahi mm-hmm. and that future space, yeah. um, my whole mindset is so you know, and it's It has shifted from, oh, I really want to work in the industry to, oh, actually, I, this energy's over here where I want to help them. Mm-hmm. But I also love... Working on these cool projects, yeah. you know, and that's where I am now, yeah. actually. Yeah. You have a choice to go between the worlds, yeah. eh? which is pretty cool. And actually, we're not really supportive of our people who are, have ambitions to help people. Like, that's actually a huge part of their business. They can, they definitely are the one of the busiest people, you know, businesses you ever know. But within the business, there's this sort of culture that, uh, and there's a lot of people out there who are actually doing their own little things for the community and the business has its own thing going for the communities which means that the surrounding management have that mindset i say oh he's doing something that's really good for them then okay we should support that you know and i like that you have to like run it past before you do a podcast with the team no because we just know not to talk about certain things but um you know there are rules there we talk about a heaven place but uh just in terms of um, supporting us with our own businesses yeah. and knowing that I'm trying to help uh, Rangatahi, that's definitely something that they could back. It's cool, eh? That's yeah. what we want to hear. Because, you know, those looking on the outside and just see the name Weta, eh? Yeah. And it's such a massive name, but it means more than its original name <laughs> oh, now, eh? Of yeah. the, the little creature, you know? I, know it's, um, I actually feel like I'm quite... I can defend Weta in, in a really respectful way now because I've seen the the negatives that some people have talked about, mm-hmm. but I've also seen the the positive that it's had impact it's on our people's lives. So, um, yeah, it's something that I I, I respect her for that. So yeah, um, for you know maybe a parent who might be listening or watching or even a youngster and they're like. Man, that sounds awesome. I want to get into that. Do you have kind of like some general navigation tips for people who, you know, wish to have a, you know, everyone's telling them don't, you know, don't, <laughs> you know, go and use your mind, you're creative. Yeah. Maybe be asking yourself if you're creative is a good first step or something. Like that. 100%. I think it's, like you said, that water, especially from that end. And I'm, um, you know, we, we can. I feel like we can all say, and we we are on this in employment in the working end of being creative, getting money for it. But from this end, especially without the knowledge or the experience, um, that we, you know, they don't understand it. So maybe they feel like um, they. It's, it's hard for them. I was actually talking to the guy at, at in the spa today about this exact thing, and it's talking about the journey. And he said his son was creative, but he didn't know the pathway, and no, not, no one in the family understood it. So it's like a uncharted water. So like, oh, why would we support him mm. going into the wild yeah. in that direction <laughs> yeah. somewhere? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When we don't know it, he doesn't know it. You know, it's like it's really uncomfortable. So I was really. Um, it, to me, it sort of solidified a lot of the research that I found around. Uh, it's very hard for our people in our community to say to our children, go in that direction. And they're like, they don't understand it. And my dad didn't understand it. But the difference was that I had a bit of a, I guess you could say I was naive. I was naive and blind to say, that's my goal. And I can't actually see it. And I'm looking outside, but I'm going that way. And, um, didn't matter what anyone said, I actually had this target and I had a lot of barriers, right? I wasn't the most, I wasn't the smartest in school. Uh, definitely was not the fastest or best in study, but I had something different to everyone else. Mm, I was from yeah. South Auckland. Mm. I had the grind. I had that voice in my head from the teacher who said, you're not going to get nowhere with this. Mm. So, well, I'm still going. If, 
if I knew that everyone in my class put in four hours into study because the class starts at nine, finishes at whatever, then they go home and play games, okay, I know I'm not the fastest learner, so I'm going to put in double, triple time to meet that same standard. Um, and that was a mentality I had. I guess I had my dad's voice, you know, going, hey, you know, you always work harder than everyone else. If you want to succeed, you work harder. And it's just like that same analogy to um, in the gym. <laughs> you know, if you've got that guy who's like a gym buff who he spends a huge part of his day uh, committed to his, his craft, it's actually no different. But then the hard part, now that I'm in the industry, it's like now I've got to peel back that a little bit. Yeah. I should yeah. be, you know, rather than going, oh, I need to put in an extra four hours. So it'd be the same as everyone else. No, really, it's like you're probably going to peak and then you probably need to come back down a bit and try to try find a good level to yes. balance life with. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Whereas in the beginning, just go hard, you know, work hard. Yeah. So that's. that's awesome. Absolutely, man. It's, it's good for me to learn that because I'm. Um, just like the podcast, it started during lockdown and it started the whole entire thing of, of going into podcasting. Uh, I feel like I'm getting into my, into my prime now, but realizing that I'm also losing my personal time. I need that time to me because then, because I will have witnessed me just go <laughs> and basically go off. And so I, I tend to now realize that uh, my weekends are important to me. Sorry, Judy. Shout out to Judy. That I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my weekend off. This is mm. fine. This is me. So, but work is work is work. Work smarter, work harder. Is is ultimate for me at the end of the day. Well, and I'm always kind of like trying to guide you to like observe what what bits feel really good when you're doing it. You know, yeah. like. Like, I really love podcasts, which is why I spent all of the last 10 years <laughs> trying to work out where do I fit in that space. Yeah. But that's not it. We're all, I think, and it's just, I think it's quite logical. We're all gifted with something. Mm. And it's like part of the challenge of all of the generations to help you just get a little bit of time to think about that. Show you a few opportunities and then say, do you like that? And for you to like take that plunge to say, yeah, I really like that. It's worth staying up really late for. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think there's not many opportunities to make those mistakes, you know, yeah, because yeah. if you've got that mindset, work hard, and you just went into your first year of study, what's your mindset? Don't quit. Yeah. Keep going right yeah. to the end. And remember, I was, I was a lecturer for seven years, mm. and I taught the third year, basically trying to help them get into where I am now. The problem being, they get to the third year, they graduate, and they go... Nah, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. You just dedicated, like, and you were really talented. Yeah. You dedicated three years now. Yeah, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Mm. But you just you just decided that after graduating, or even during the last year, but they because they've got the mindset to continue, which is a good, you know, good work ethic. Um, yeah, there's that issue there of going, actually, this is harder than I thought. Mm. So, you know, and many... and many ways you sort of hope is there a way for them to experience this all a lot earlier like a taster or something yeah. oh not even yeah. a taster because a taster is always meant to be tasting good true because yeah. every taster I've ever done and I've done a lot of those little day things yeah. we have to make it great right <laughs> and they yeah. fall in love with it sometimes they say oh, I'm going to sign up and like <laughs> are we talking something like what an OE used to be you'd ha- you'd f- no I'm talking about like a work one, like a one hour workshop okay. To the point they go, oh, yeah, I love this now. I'll dedicate for three years. And I'm like, man, I did that to you. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and then three years later, they're like, nah. Yeah. Oof, yeah. It's, it's very tricky, eh? Yeah, because what you said there was a mirror of me two years ago Absolutely. going into three years studies of, of, of software development. I, I did three years of networking and hardware, and I was like, cool, I, I'm, I love IT. I want to go into software so I can do coding and do all the background stuff. Yeah. I hit my third year, and I went, I don't know what if I wanted to do this. Mm. And so, like, my brain's like, okay, i got to find an industry that's going to accept me as an intern for the next six months. I then have to make this into a project. After that project, I then have to have KPIs and whatnot. 
I'm a I'm a tweet I'm a thirty year old. I still don't know what KPIs are, <laughs> and I, I'm still I'm just sweating bullets. Going, I don't know if I can do this. And then COVID hit, and I'm going, it happened to me. Thank you. And then I I, I looked at my lectures. I went, I can't do this anymore. Mm. So when I heard you say that, I was just like, man, I'm I'm pretty much validated to what I was doing that that, that third year because it does come into a wall. And five years ago, I would say that I was very pushy. So uh, by that, I mean, because I knew the numbers of multi percent people passing through me at level three, at the third year, it was like I was frustrated. So I meant that I, I wanted to push them even more. Yeah. And by pushing them, it's like just get them to the point of success and career. And then it even happened after I left lecturing, I was still helping. Them. And they're like, man, I can't believe you're still trying to help us. I'm like, I am trying to help you because you need to be working. You're talented, and I'm trying to help you. And like, and you know, I was just talking about it before. Like, um, unfortunately, I have to come to the reality that although they're talented, they're multi Pacific from South Oak, right? Because they're taking my boxes of the people I want to help, and they've done three years of study. Some of them four, some of them five. So my mind's like, I really want to give that person a job somewhere. I have to also take into consideration that right now, I'm talking about three years after them graduating, they could be happy still. They might not be in the creative job that we had supposedly designed for them to get into and that I'm up here now trying to pull them up, um, that actually some of them are just quite happy now. Um, there's there's actually this dishonesty amongst the 3D world, the 3D artists that... Um, for a lot of people, it actually affects their well-being in the 3D world because we are behind a computer for long hours. You know, I got so back because I sat down too much. And um, I got a friend of mine who was he studied with me. He came into I got him a job into teaching with me, and I've always thought of him as being talented. And then he left that because of his well-being. And then even now and then, I've been reaching out to him, but then he sort of re- recently came back to me and said, "Hey, bro." I know, like, where you're coming from. You're coming from a good place because you always have a heart to help us to, you know, be where you are. Because if I, I think I, I want everyone to be here. But he said to me, to be honest, I, when I reflect on all my time spending behind that computer, my well-being was down here. And that was him just being honest for himself. It wasn't, the pressure wasn't designed for anyone else. It was... The pressure he put on himself to be behind that computer and to be great and to do all the awesome things that we do. Because the technology is constantly changing. Mm. So we're constantly researching Absolutely. as well as working, as well as as a lecturer trying to help people around us. And if, uh, you know, for him to reflect like that, I thought it was powerful. Um, I'm too in love with this industry to ever yeah. go away with it. But for him to be honest like that, and it actually, um, he also realized that said right during that period in which he was reflecting his father had passed away and it also meant he realized wait a minute I wasn't home Mm. a lot because I was dedicated to this craft which was actually affecting his personal well-being and he's like why (laughs) you know why because of money Mm. it wasn't enough and and that's why the uh, going right back to what you said about advice for parents, if money is the driver, it can't drive you into that industry because actually I'm not driven by the money, I'm driven by the passion. Yeah. Like when I wake up every morning, I go, yeah, I'm going to make some dollars. When I wake up every morning, that's, yeah, I'm going to work on these really cool projects. Um, and then, like, that motivates me. But I also think that is how you. If it's not well being, I think being well is waking up like that. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I don't know what it's like to earn lots of money, like lots and lots. But you always hear stories that people, you know, there's two things I remember hearing. It's like one is no one talks about their money on their deathbed. Yeah. And two, money can't solve all your yeah. problems. I still don't really believe that. Like having heaps of money, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you could solve, could solve all my lot, problems. Or maybe a, I would say a majority for me. Yeah. yeah. But, but there must well, be something in well. this, what we're talking about, which is doing something meaningful and that you really love it, you know? And that's where I also say to you, Vin, like, podcasting doesn't have to be your thing, mm. but maybe it's another avenue to find your thing. 
Except, yeah. you know, you might bump into someone and all our podcasts might be episode 22. And you're like, hey, remember that? I want to do that. Yeah. And then it's like, that's, that's, that's the bit you hope in life that everyone can have. And it's, I think we're all just talking about what's the best ways to find those. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, is podcasting has become an avenue where I could never be in. I can wholeheartedly say that I'm not a very confident person. Well, it's if, helpful for yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you, if you ever put me in a room with like at least fifty person, you'll see me at the farthest corner in that room going. Absolutely okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still on my phone going. Um, how much would it cost to Uber a pizza yeah. so I can just eat it in front of but, everyone? But that's an education problem, eh? Yeah. They need to provide. If, well, like, what well, I think what we're doing is successfully providing an environment. <laughs> which people can maybe feel a bit comfortable with. You're actually delivering a lot of gold, which is the measurement for lots of these type of, A, like social media clips and you're talking yeah. about, you know. But what I think is like maybe the only thing it can't do is scale in real life. But you could have three or four of these little rooms happening and, with and, guests and, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, yeah always constantly having a conversation and then that's the key thing in that I and I learned from podcasting is the fact that you always are going to have a conversation with someone. And like, you anticipate it. Yeah. And then you have it and you're not thinking the only thing you're thinking is I should ask that. You know? Well, that's after it. But mm -hmm. the thing is that you it shatters your expectation the first half. Like when, when before we had this conversation, I was like, Oh, Ken's gonna be cool. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna be precise with his answers. I feel like because he's we worked in the industry for X amount of We had of all these judgments, eh? Yeah, see. And then I came in, brother just came in going, Oh bro, I just wanna chill. <laughs> I was like, No, 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 no. Yeah. You know, it's it's Creating is creating not only an environment for yourself to not only just be yourself, and this is me just being myself ultimately all the time, is that when I am in a situation where I'm by myself, and this is for my own experiences, that I can be able to go up to someone and go, hi, my name is Vince. So what do you do for a living? And that's it. And I, I want to do that every day and not feel like I'm going to order another pizza in the corner mm. of the room. You know, that's a really good, um, you know, th example that you use. I, I was, I've never been a confident kid, and um, a lot of my personality is probably based on what's you know something that I broke through. As I was when I was young, I've always been the big kid, so there's always that fear of uh, being mocked or or whatever. Yeah. And I remember at age, we were at uh, Waiwera when it was at its best. And mum um, was like, oh, you know, don't worry, son. I know you don't want to jump in the pool. Uh, and I just, she goes, but you know what? It actually doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. You realise that, eh? And I was, uh, as a kid, it actually just went blink. And I said, like, you know what? <laughs> and I, I've always been that person now. Like, you could see me anyway. I'll be walking around with no t shirt, jandals, sometimes in my underwear, and just don't living care. their best life, right? Yeah. Exactly. And it's just, and it's also something I'm trying to portray to the children, you know, like, yeah, my dad's actually the biggest person around, but damn, he, you will see him rocking no t shirt and undies <laughs> and jandals, like, up to the mailbox, and he don't care. Um, and that just came with, you know, with time. And yeah. still today, I have my moments where, like you said, when I'm in a big room of people, I say, too much. Uh, time to curl up and be an introvert. And then, but it's all right when people come and pull you out of it, you know, and it's yeah. like, okay, you know. And moments like this, you know, whereas I like to be in my little cabin, just working, yeah. chilling out, and just, you know, uh, what's the word, controlling the internet from my fingertips, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we thinking about asking, Vin, as we explain? You, you, you can ask questions about the the projects. Like, this. I wouldn't say anything that was going to get me in trouble. Is, so. um, have you seen, um, is Avatar, is the new Avatar ready to rock? Like, have you seen that? Do you guys get to watch the whole lot? No, but uh, I'll be working on it. So, uh, it's, I actually got to start on it way back in 2017. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually quite excited to work on it again because I'll be working on it from two different departments oh, yeah. over a five years that's been. So, uh, but no, I, I've just yeah. So we're just wrapping up, uh, finishing up on a She Hulk. So oh yeah, cool. uh, Attorney uh, at Law, right? Is that, is that yeah? So that's the one that 
brought me out of my shell again to come and work for Weather. Yeah. Um, I was working at the Cause Collective before that. You know, heard that opportunity, you know. And so for me, childhood stuff, cling, cling, cling again. Mm-hmm. Childhood dreams, Disney, Marvel. Yeah. That's always been on my bucket list. So, so you know, you automatically get me. It's like, Disney, Marvel, I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out the, the 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 obvious the obvious question. What what is your Marvel Marvel hero? What's my Marvel hero? And and a villain. A villain. Oh, Thanos. Hey, why why would it be Thanos? I think he just. I don't know. I could probably see my father in him a little bit. <laughs> Real authoritative figure. Well, and um, also, it, it it's a confronting because. There was part of you in all of us which is like, it's not all wrong. Exactly. Of course it is if you say it out loud. You're like, Ugh, I can't really say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, but absolutely. Even like he destroyed the thing, um, that he destroyed them after he'd done the intended. You know, like, it's interesting, Cause Collective, Ulu, who's the yeah. cause and effect. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It is Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> he had a cause and it had an effect yeah. and then he... Didn't go back on his word. It was very honourable, but it was just horrific honour. <laughs> yeah, and I think he just—I don't know—his whole presence, his all his nuances, and yeah. probably the fact that the people who um, I consider my mentors in the industry—they worked on his face. <laughs> yeah, uh, and That's so knowing cool. that was like. Two salmons worked on their face yeah, that's and it awesome. won the Yeah, <laughs> oh, and, and, and I know them. Yes, and. And I consider them mentors, even though they don't even see it as they mentored me. But yeah. purely by by talking to me, by answering questions for me when I was studying, they were my mentors. And you know, uh, one of the guys, Jacob Luo Manavaisua, he's he's actually been an advocate for Samoan uh, Pacific people in the industry for for ages. He's been around since the first Lord of the Rings. Nice. Uh, another a guy named Jack Timmer. Um, there's a few of them, a few salmons in my department, and I love it. It's just, I think we possibly have the most specific people in our department versus any other department in the world. So to me, I was like, I was going into a bit of an island of department. Island. <laughs> but that's cool. That's, yeah, cool. that's information that – that's the clickbait I want to hear and read. But that, that, that had to – see, that's the problem with – that's the hardness of life. That had to come out at 49 minutes. Mm. There's no other way to extract that mm. insight no. because that sits deep near your heart or soul. Mm. Yeah, close to your core. And Absolutely. That, for me, that's the reason to get into STEM because, you know, your two mentors worked on Thanos. Thanos is the biggest Marvel villain. It's the biggest film in history, and we have a part to play in that. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't come off just like it did without that creative energy. And it's a funny little uh, cycle, right? Because Thanos, spoiler, wasted the Hulk, right? And then I get to work on the Hulk. Hey. You know? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's my, my whole career to this moment. Proud of it. Okay, what's next? You know? Yeah. Um, and so for me, it's like, I've, uh, there's a three companies that always come to my mind. Pixar, Disney, Marvel, which are all connected now. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so probably the next things for me would be, you know, if they ever had a Star Wars film, there would be a little tick box there. Um, but yeah, it's, I would say the experience working at um, Weta, from my perspective, I, the, the, the leads, the team, they're actually really helpful. Uh, they make it actually make it easy for you to sort of be amongst that space. Um, and I find that one thing I've always loved about this industry is that there's a place for every skill, you know? So even laborers have a place in weather, right? Because yeah. they, um, so we have different variety of jobs. There's the people who take care of the maintenance, but they're actually a weather staff, not just some maintenance people. Um, they help take care of all the equipment. They, um, the people who build the stages mm. for a lot of the sets. Mm. It's, it's a very cohesive. It's like you know, this little ecosystem. Um, and people often look at me and say, "Oh man, I wish I could work there." It's like, well, technically you could. You know, even what you were saying to me about the you know, coding, like that's an industry that I've always stayed away from because I can't 
code and that information just passes my head mm. but they have a place for those people you know and they're mm. usually the people who help us because um you know if you think about anything from this software to all of this technology is all connected through someone developing something absolutely an artist does not develop <laughs> well those people they're the the rare ones i say so we got the artists you've got the technical pipeline people and then you have people who are both you just they're like superhuman and you're like yeah i'm not that <laughs> but they're the ones who are like even extra awesome and you just have this all respect for them because you're like man can't believe you do everything um and i'm just over here making pretty pictures but you can also make pretty pictures and fix all the problems and code things and make whole new worlds and so wow so yeah, so as you, in a way, I'm a bit of a fanboy just working there. Yeah, and I love that. If you saw my office, it's full of toys. <laughs> hey. You know, and I love that. I can be comfortable in that space now. Um, when I first first ever animation job, I worked for a company called October, and I was in Auckland, and it was like a rare occasion for Nickelodeon to bring contracts here to Auckland. Mm. Yeah, and. It was Kung Fu Panda. It was Monsters vs. Aliens. I think they were working on Penguins and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And that entire environment was like everything I'd ever dreamed, dreamt of. You know, uh, they had like a badminton court in the middle of the uh, studio. Nice. You know, these really awesome, um, what do you call it? These uh, cafe within the within the studio hey. where you can make your own cafe and fridges. And it'd be from, I sound weird, but being from South Auckland, when you put free food out there, it's just like, you got me. I don't care what you're getting paid, right? Because you got food. That's like half of my pay. Yeah. I don't worry about it. If you got, the, you got the food sorted, you know, and I remember one of my very, very first animation jobs, I went to the kitchen and I just remember this, just because I like to observe, you know, and I saw people walk in, walk into the fridge, grab all these drinks and just walk up and I was like... And then there's some people gave me fruit, and I was like, "What's going on?" And I looked around, and I went back. I said, "Is the food free?" They're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "What?" Go back, and I come back to my desk. I'm like, <laughs> and I think it was that moment. I was like, "Okay, you got me on another level, right?" And then you don't have me on just the money and also the cool projects, but the food. Oh, oh I know, right? It's like. <laughs> You have me for life. It's <laughs> you know? actually been like that. Every student I've ever been from, they just take care of you, all three areas. Damn. So that's like, they probably think you did, that's the well being factor, but no, you still need some counseling. There. Well, I think they also know the hours you put in, the sort back, you know, the things that, like, just like uh, athletes get pampered in different ways. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you got to. Your, your weapon's the mind, eh? Yeah. And it's got to be always on. And um, definitely, it's kind of like. I think all of that research is still being done about what all of this digital content means in the future. And what I have, a, like. I suspect it will be yeah. uploaded and we'll have digital AI versions of ourselves. And, you know, even like uh, there's a kind of digital archive, which you're leaving through the films for your family. It's kind of interesting exactly. there. Yeah. You know, actually the, you talk about digital archive, you know, whenever I hear about a, <clears throat> a famous Hollywood actor pass away, I'm off the ground old now I'm going to go way back and look at some of those old films and you start to realise damn like what a huge archive of films going right back to you know the 70s yeah. there's a lot of films have made and your children and your generation of children will be able to just see you performing at and all these different levels and mm. what a way to archive you yeah. But it's, fun, of it's funny though because I've been on this Tom Cruise run at the moment. I don't know why. But it's, I know why. It's because I'm not even the fan he still of the looks original good for Tom. Age, yeah. He's just that dude. So, you know, the family and I put the kids to bed, and then like my wife and I watch. We just got through all the Mission Impossibles, and really, and and, um, and then we were watching you know, Jerry Maguire, and oh, and so really I was nice. like, man, what a cool dude. And, yeah. and then M- Moni, my wife, said, oh, I don't think he even is. He, you know, catches up with his kids at the moment. You know, there's some stuff there, and I'm like, so when you say that, it's also like there's going to be this weird reckoning for his family True. where they'll have an archive. Or if they don't have an interest, 
interested at all. Yeah, right? but they get to see him in this environment. Yeah. I think about that through my podcast career. My kids hopefully will go back and have mm. a listen, and they'll be like, oh, that was when he wasn't grumpy at me for not brushing my teeth. Or, you know, there's a whole different version of us too, which comes through here. Absolutely. So. It reminds me of one of my favorite comedians of all time. Mm. His name is Don Rickles. Don Rickles did the voice for Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> and they didn't need to, they didn't need him to record anything. They just gave him about two days worth of, of lines and they went, Okay, we'll, even if he passes on, we'll just use the lines that we got. Wow. Yeah. So he did he did over a thousand lines and the best thing about it was that like you said, you look back at, at the timeline that he when he started his, his, his career, he he started off in the early sixties and the seventies, he hang out with like the rat pack, so that's like Sinatra and all those guys. Mm. And the mid eighties the 90s hang out with with like De Niro, Joe Pesci, all those guys, and then early early 2000s to late 2000s before he passed on, he hanged out with like Jimmy Fallon, all those guys. But all that connection, he reminded himself that his family is still key. So he talks about his wife Barbara and his kids and all that. You know, it's going back to the, that balance. So he, when even at his older age, he was going back to like like Vegas to do shows and whatnot. But he always brought his family with him. So, so it was a cool thing about. Well, it. you know, you think about that space, uh, and you think about it. All our success in our careers, our children don't necessarily see our career as our highlight. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've been asking some really weird questions to my kids lately. Like, if I passed away tomorrow, um, what would be the one thing you must do with me? And it's never been anything to do with my career, right? Yeah. It's nothing to do with my career ever. It's never been. It's like uh, doing this, talking to you, yeah. spending time with you. I'm like, Oh, time to reflect on life even more, right? Because, yeah. and that's one of the reasons I probably I dedicate myself to a little bit of well being every now and then because it's, it's so that I'm obviously attuned to my career, but attuned to them too. Make sure that they have a hundred percent energy when I'm off them, as opposed to what I used to do, which is always split. You know. Um, Ken, I feel like we could uh, talk to you for hours. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> know, right? the realities of the grind come back in. We've got to open the doors again of our community centre. But um, can we just thank you, bro, for talking yeah, to no us worries. and yeah, thank um, you. connecting? And hopefully, this plants a seed for us to do more quarter door like yeah. this. Um, Absolutely. I don't know. We have these geek camps every school holiday. I just my mind fizzes when I imagine that. What are the plants we could seed now and? 25 computers what if that became its own little studio in the future exactly. you know and i mean it all starts with dreams and hopes and um the cool thing is we don't need anyone else you got the ip in your mind yeah. and uh it's not maybe not right for every scenario but it could be yeah it could yeah. be and all of a sudden thanos is created by the people we know so exactly. bro, we want to thank you again thank yeah. you bro. Right. thank you guys for having me and you know, if, if one thing, Monitor always strives to help them. And uh, today, the, the technology is there for them, all accessible for free. So, you know, the, the sky is the limit. Thanks for having me. No worries, man. 